let's get into it. Soul Not For Sale podcast. Coach Colin here. I have talked about what I'm going to talk about after this Joe Rogan clip quite a bit, and that is the attack within. And the reason that I'm bringing this up now is I want you to listen close to all the numbers that you're about to hear, all the stats you're about to hear about American citizens and what they're going through right now. This is absolutely crazy. And it's just one of those things that makes me think this can't be by chance. This seems to be by design because how else could this have happened? You know, um, I always chalk it up to greed, you know, and a lot of us do, of course, right? Companies so greedy, kickbacks, this, that. But when you start hearing these numbers, I don't know. I don't know, man. Just listen to this. Listen to what these two have to say about the numbers in regards to obesity and diabetes and cancer. Just listen to this. You convince yourself of that. Wow. So it's just everyone's sort of captured by this thing and nobody steps out of the lines. I mean, the highest level, Joe, you know, I think we don't realize that there's a defining existential issue in our country where our major institutions have been captured. Um, I think there's like pings of consciousness trying to alert us to this, like, you know, you having people on that are calling this stuff out, trying to ring the alarm bell and people flocking to this show, you know, iconic class from the military industrial complex, from the healthcare industrial complex. I think Elon being the richest person, the world's trying to sell us something. It's like, let's get resources to these people calling these things out. I think it's like Donald Trump. Like I've been thinking about this a lot. Why is he the defining figure of our lifetime? Like why have voters again and again and again gone to him and said, you know, this MAGA movement, like why are we like supporting this person, making him the defining person of our generation? What does he represent? He represents like putting finger on something that's just not quite right with institutions. And I think the problem is we can't quite wrap our hand head around how bad it is and how so many people are complicit. But there's all these signs right now, and I think I think we're going to be brought to our knees if we don't realize this, that our institutions have been captured. Like to me, healthcare, what Casey talks about, it's, it's a really visceral example of something just not right with what's happening to food, what's happening to our kids' health. Um, and I think it's happening to the military too, or the military industrial complex. Like I'm truly worried that we're on the verge of almost a societal level collapse with what's happening to our food, what's happening to our health, what's happening with the potential nuclear war. And I think we have people starting to realize this and they're trying to like lunge out for it. Um, but we're being told it's alarmist. We're being told it's a conspiracy theory. And and to me, that that's what we've kind of landed on this health issue. Let's just bring it down to the facts of what's happening to kids. <laughs> let's bring it down to just like, let's forget the conspiracy theory. What even uh, anyone saying in this room? Let's look what's happening to our food and look what's happening to kids. Because by the stats we're seeing, there's something really dark happening. Like like outside any conspiracy theory, just the statistics of what is happening to our health in this country and uniquely in America, it's dark. Mm. And so, Casey, if you could do, do the same, sort of to explain how you got on this path. You, you started off with medical school. Yeah. and Yeah. So just like Callie, you know, we grew up in D.C. I was I loved biology, went to Stanford Medical School, went on to do surgical residency and head and neck surgery, climb the ladder, you know, do what every good medical student and uh, resident is supposed to do, climb the academic ranks, publish papers, et cetera. And so I was heads down in that journey. And. Just like Callie's saying, like with what I think is happening with the American people right now and really more globally, like there was something inside of me that was whispering and then speaking a little louder and then finally was a deafening call to me that like something is not right. Like I'm operating, I'm working eight hours a week. I'm operating, you know, two, three, four, five surgeries a day. And, you know, in some ways I feel good about that. You know, people, maybe their sinusitis is a little better for a little while. But fundamentally, when you pop up for just a second, which they don't want you to do in healthcare, you know, everyone's working their tails off. But when you pop up for just just a second and look around at what ha is happening to American health, children's health, health across the lifespan, as well as global health, it's a disaster. It's literally a disaster. And again, this isn't people will say that's alarmist. But I, you know, in trying to understand, like, why don't I feel right about my work? I just started looking at the data in a different way. And I started to look at what's happening with health trends. And if you just kind of run through the list of what's happening, it's it's unbelievable. Like we are getting destroyed and it's very recent and it's accelerating. The stats speak for themselves. You know, you know this very well. 74 percent of Americans are overweight or obese. Uh, 50 percent now of American adults have type 2 diabetes or prediabetes. These were diseases where there was 1 percent of Americans in 1950 had type 2 diabetes. Now it's 50 percent of Americans have prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. Alzheimer's <sighs> dementia are going through the roof. Young adult dementias have increased like three times since 2012. So early onset dementias, we're seeing 
you know, this one in two Americans are expected to have cancer in their lifetime now. One in two. And young adult cancers are going up 79% in the last 10 years. We've got, of course, the autism rates are absolutely astronomical. One in 36 children has autism now in the United States. That was one in 150 in the year 2000. And in California, where I live, it's one in 22. One in 22 with a lifetime neurodevelopmental disorder. We've got infertility going up 1% per year. 25% of men now under 40 have erectile dysfunction, a quarter of the country. You know, this is fundamentally a metabolic disease. We've got 77% of young Americans can't serve in the military because of obesity or drug abuse. We've got we've got autoimmune diseases. Some studies are saying they're going up 13% per year. Um, it, it's just, it's, it's really unbelievable. And I could go through so many more diseases. Of course, um, we've got heart disease, which is almost totally preventable as the leading cause of death in the United States, killing around 800,000 people per year. Um, And I think what, as I kind of just looked around, and again, these are just statistics, I started trying to put the pieces together. Why is this happening? Why are these all going up all at once? And that led me on what is now a seven, eight year journey, ultimately leaving the surgical world, putting down my scalpel forever. Because what I realized is that when you go to the science with a root cause perspective, you go back to PubMed with a slightly different perspective, not how do I treat these diseases once they emerge, but why are they happening? You see a very obvious blaring answer, which is why we had to write a book about it, which is that it's all caused by metabolic dysfunction, um, a term that I never learned in medical school. I learned about metabolic syndrome and the different individual diseases that make it up. But there is a problem. There is a fundamental breaking of our core cellular biology that is caused by our diet and the world we're living in, the modern world we're living in today, that is crushing the very way that the human body and our human cells can transmit food energy to life energy, to cellular energy. And so our bodies are essentially, I mean, fundamentally, because metabolic health is how we make energy in the body, the way that our environment is now synergistic to storing our metabolic health, and the science is very clear about this, it's basically like all of us are a little bit dead while we're alive. That's what metabolic dysfunction is. It's less energy in the body. We're underpowered. And that's very dark. Like when you step back and and say, okay, This is clear from the research, and I never learned it. I didn't learn it at Stanford Medical School. I didn't learn it in my surgical residency. And we could fix it. We could fix it really quickly if we all popped up and woke up and looked at the data and put pieces together. But of course, we're not trained to connect dots. That's not our job in medicine. We are trained to follow algorithms and to be reactive. And so I think, um, you know, just to sort of kind of back up to the bigger picture of of why we're so passionate about this. I think that the reason there's a Maha movement, the reason that people are so passionate about your podcast that talks about this so much, people know that something's not right. And people know that this health issue is the tip of the iceberg of what's actually happening in our world today. It is a reflection. Our human health is simply a reflection of the destroyed ecosystem of our globe. The fact that we are we have forgotten that we're completely connected to nature and we're completely interdependent with nature. But the, the health crisis is simply a reflection of a destroyed ecosystem. And humans have become so powerful and so technologically advanced and so connected in the recent decades that we now actually do have the power to both destroy the world and destroy our health. And the health is just the tip of the iceberg of a much bigger thing happening that is existential. And I think that's, we all want kids to be healthy. We all want humans to be healthy, but this is also, it's interconnected with all the systems and all the issues. And that's, I think it's hard for people to to totally articulate that, but that is what's happening. And we, we we actually have a choice right now. And I do believe this is the moment that we need to decide, are we going to address these interdependent issues? And are we going to, make the effort and be courageous enough to fight for this? Or are we going to let ourselves be told that there's nothing wrong, nothing to see here, um, while our health and the health of the planet is just absolutely being destroyed? Man, this is what, let's see, this is what I mean by those numbers. I couldn't even write them all down. 74% obese, what was it, 50% either have pre-diabetes or or type uh, type 1 or type 2? Young, young uh, adult dementia, which I did not even know was a thing. I didn't even get the percent on that. I think she said 34, you know. Oh, man, this is so crazy. One in two cancer. Uh, What is it? One, one in six, uh, one in 36 autism. So many different things. 
But when you look at all this, like, it's interesting. It's very interesting. You know, back in the day when there was war and there was a possibility of a draft and there was World War One and World War Two and, and when uh, the citizens were really needed, they made sure that every citizen was in shape. You were in good shape. You had a six pack. You were trimmed. You were fit. They made sure that you could do these things in school, you know, jump walls and climb ropes and do all of this stuff. And now that they're at a point where they don't need us quite, all of a sudden our health has gone down dramatically. And the thing about it is, is that they point to us as the problem, right? But then they talk about these, these um, organizations, these entities that have been captured, you know? I understand we all make the choices, somewhat, because if you can't afford organic food, that hasn't been sprayed or if you just don't have the room in your apartment to grow your own food it's a you're kind of making your own choice but not really you don't have access to other choices right you could go carnivore if you could afford it or if you could handle just eating you know one steak a day you know you could do it i guess it's not in many people's mindsets it just seems like this is you know, it's the same argument when people talk about God. You look at all this stuff going on and you're like, you really think there's no creator? Like, I think there's a creator. This looks so created. Everything's so precise. And it's the same with this. This is not run amok. This seems very precise. And that's where I differ from what she's saying. She feels like this is just like the erosion and this is just happening and it's this disaster. I don't think it's, I don't, well, it's a disaster definitely, but I don't think it's just a bunch of people who were greedy and out of control and weren't thinking and a law passed here and there. I don't think that's what it is. It seems way too precise, way too precise. And oddly enough, it goes along with the current agenda of, Hey, Hey, we don't need so many people. It goes along with the exact same thing. It's interesting the way that works. That we're taught to be so, that we're so insignificant that, you know what, you don't need a mother. Who wants to be a mother? You can go to work, girl. Come on. You could go to work for a company and make money for the company. What? Come on. Independent lady. Let's do it. That's what you want more than anything. Guys are being forced into this weird incel, incel hood where you're just kind of stuck in your mom's basement. You know, a lot of guys who are older stuck in their mom's basement. Even if they had regular jobs and they were like, it's hard to get the money to even move out of the basement. You know, some guys end up just making enough money to move into someone else's basement. It's a real thing. It's funny, but it's true. It's not funny, but it is true. You know? So, I don't know. When I see all this, I just don't know that this is all just by mistake. Oh, they're just so greedy. That's all this is. I don't know, man. You know, it's like this. And please, any Freemasons watching, please don't be insulted by this. But us regular people, <laughs> the theory that we have access to about the Masons, because they can't talk about themselves all that much, is that there's these lower level guys who are all about charity and brotherhood and fraternity. And they're actually really hardworking, great guys. I've met a lot of Masons. They're usually impressive people usually but then the theory is that at the top levels there's people who are worshiping satan and you don't know about that until you cross over to the 33 degree and then you find out and blah 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 you know same thing with scientology the you know uh, leah dunham Dun dunham i think her name is she revealed that at the top parts it's like all of a sudden you have all these aliens in you and you're taught that you have to do something to exercise all these alien demons or some weird stuff like that. Okay. So sorry to the Scientologists butchering it here. I only have a Bible. Sorry. Sorry about that. But it's kind of the same thing where, yeah, okay. There's some guys who are just greedy. There's politicians, you know, heads of these industries, these organizations. Yeah. They're greedy. They just want to make money. But I think there's something a little bit higher up that really has an intention to weaken people. And when I look at this, 
it's hard to argue. Do they not want you weak? Do they not want you completely immersed in victimhood all the time? Is that not what they want from you? It seems to me like that's what they want from all of us. They want us to bask in victimhood. They want us to, if you're fat and you're losing weight, you can be labeled as fat phobic because you're losing weight. You know, if you're exercising too hard, you could be labeled as right wing, far right wing extremist. You know, it's like it's just thing after thing that's meant to strengthen you. They demonize. And then all of a sudden, just by chance, the entire food industry is plaguing us with all of these things that we just heard just by chance. Oh, it's the, just the greedy people. That's all. I don't know, man. It doesn't seem like it does not seem like it to me. And I've and I've just over the past, not even just the past four years, the past four years have been a doozy. The past like 10 years, there's too many things that are going on that are by design that we find out very slowly that when you look at this, you can't be like, well, this is just this is just random. That's all this is. You know, she didn't learn this at Stanford. She said Stanford Medical School. What? Isn't that where Steve Jobs went? Isn't that supposed to be like the school? She didn't learn about metabolic syndrome. Hey, tell me something. When have you even heard the term metabolic? Has your doctor ever said that to you? Mine hasn't ever. No, no, that's crazy. <laughs> I've heard it on YouTube. I've worked with different types of doctors, you know, in a different respect. And I've heard things like that, but never have I gone to just my doctor and he said, you know, metabolic syndrome. Never. We never talk about my metabolism or anything. I don't know, man. I don't know. You know, there's certain things where sometimes keeping us in the dark is the thing that's by design. So it's like, yeah, your doctor could just be in the dark. And he just seems incompetent, but him being incompetent is by design. You know what I mean? You not having access to actual fresh caught salmon, just salmon that's in drums, that's leaching the metal off of the drums into the salmon. And they consider that wild caught like that's that, you know, you don't have a choice in that. That's by design. You know what I mean? You don't have you don't really have a choice to just go hunting because, you know, maybe you're in a position where you don't have all the things you need. Maybe you can't own a firearm. Maybe you're in that position. I don't know. Maybe you don't have the money to get one. Maybe you just you're just trying to get by and you don't have time to just restructure your life like this. Maybe you always lived in the city and you don't even know how to take care of a house plant, let alone grow herbs that you can put inside a salad. That's where I was at for the longest time. I still can't do it. My wife does. And we even let the basil plant die. It's hard. I don't know. But all that's by design. It's like, well, I live in the city. It's not. It's like the city didn't just pop up like poof. Oh, I'm in the city. Ooh, the cities are by design. They moved us further away from the nature that we could live off of. It's all by design. So it's pretty hard for me not to believe that these numbers are by design. And that's why I talked about at the very beginning, the attack within. This is something that I used to cover quite a bit on this channel. Um, because anytime you're talking about the World Economic Forum, which I used to talk about quite a bit, you had to talk about the attack within because that's what the World Economic Forum was based on. Right. It just it had its hands everywhere. You know, Klaus Schwab, when it comes to the government of Canada, he's like, we have two thirds of the the the, 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 can, the, the cabinet, current cabinet. It's like, OK. <laughs> and that cabinet's been in power for how many years, like 10 years? OK kind of explains Canada. They have their hands in the UK. Okay, look at the UK. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> they have association with Joe Biden. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> that makes sense. All right. <laughs> like what the f <laughs> You know what I mean? So it's like you have to talk about this weird attack within. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just rambling a little bit. But I I don't I don't think this is random. What do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think this is by design or if this is just random and I'm just talking craziness. I'm completely crazy. Go to rumble with that nonsense. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Anyways, guys, like subscribe, turn on the notifications helps the channel tremendously. Other than that, 
I'm out.